Good morning, Belmont Baptist Church. So, we are a few weeks deep into this uh, COVID crisis. Uh, I call my workstation at home the COVID Command Center. And, you know, our whole lives are just continue to be viewed through this lens of COVID. And fortunately for me this morning, I was, uh, you know, I, I said, before I get up here, I think about what I want to say. And I was thinking to my reading this morning, and I was reading a Genesis about Noah. And you think about it, that, this, this, the kind of thing Noah, Noah had going on was pretty similar to what we have going on uh, this morning or this morning with this COVID thing. You think about it, right? I mean, Noah had to stock up and he had to isolate. And then he spent, what, four, 40 days and nights. And honestly, you know, if we look at this thing, it's probably going to be pretty close to what we're spending in our own little arcs of our homes. Uh, and as I, as I think about that and listen, and just, you know, ponder that, I, I get a couple of things from, the, from, you know, just kind of drawing that parallel here. You know, number one, it was the Lord that put Noah in the ark and told Noah to be prepared. And that, again, the Lord has a plan for this time. Uh, and, you know, it's expected, what, May 15th, that some of these restrictions are going to begin to lift. And some of these things are going to uh, uh, be taken away from us. We're going to, in a sense, the, the ark, so to speak, hopefully, is going to rest on the mountain. We'll be able to start throwing some birds out there or something and figuring this thing out. And I, be, I encourage you this morning, as I'm kind of encouraging myself to do, is just to think, okay, what's next? What does the Lord have for me next? You know, and for Noah, it was to repopulate the earth. And fortunately or unfortunately for us, the earth is already populated, so we don't have to worry about that. But what, what do we have to worry about? What do we have to worry about? What's, what is the takeaway? What is the Lord trying to teach us in this time? And so I encourage you this morning just to spend some time thinking about that. And that kind of ties into the scripture I have for you this morning. And we're, so today we're going to continue in John chapter 15. And this is what the Lord commands. So I'm going to pick it up in verse 12. This is Jesus talking here. And he says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Let's pray. Lord, we do serve you, but we don't serve you as though we are in chains or as though it is the, uh, some sort of lesser of two evils or this, that, the, uh, uh, the way you have to do it if you want to go to heaven, Lord. We do it because you call us friend. It's, Lord, we take upon 
your yoke because it's light. Because we are your friends. You call us friends. Lord, we confess that we do not follow your commands to love each other, Lord. Teach us your ways. Teach us your commandments that we may encourage others and that we may live in your righteousness and most of all that you would be honored and glorified and so lord we thank you we thank you for calling us friend in your name i pray amen You can make a speech. You're on. You're on. Hi, I'm on. You're on. Hi, everybody. I miss everybody so much. I just can't hardly stand it. Sundays aren't the same. And I I watch some, some services on TV, but it's not the same as Belmont. I miss Belmont so much. Mm. I miss the hugs and the handshakes. And Hi, everybody. Everybody stay well. Stay well. Okay. Wonderful. So I understand somebody's got a birthday. Oh yeah, in a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks? There won't be any birthday party, that's oh, for sure. Oh, how young will you be? Uh, do we have to mention? <laughs> you I'll don't. Be, I'll be 88. 88. Well, yeah. good for you. On what day? The 29th. 20... A week from today. A week from today. Yep. Wow. Well, congratulations. Okay, I'm going to shut you off. Okay. All right, you're on. Hi, Belmont Baptist Church. Miss you. <laughs> we miss you. Are you behaving yourself? I have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Very. It's boring, too. <laughs> I'll bet. Yeah. Well, good to see you. Pretty soon we'll get back together. Okay, but miss you all. Oh, okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I miss you. Hey. Oh, I'm catching myself in the reflection in the mirror. Hi, folks. Uh, yeah, so are you behaving yourself? Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Well, it's pretty easy. There's a 
sure there's nobody to misbehave with. <laughs> That's true. So are you going to work most every day? Yes, I'm working. Uh, I was. I went back for five days. Now I'm working four days, and I'll probably go back down to three days, probably next week or so. Wow. That keeps you busy. Yes. But you're feeling well? Yes, doing well. All right. Well, good. We'll just say hi, and then we'll I'll say, all right, see ya. See ya. Hey, hey, how you doing today? Okay. It's no fun, is it? No. Are you behaving? Well, I have to. I have to <laughs> That's true. Well, we hope to get back together soon. <laughs> and you're feeling well? All right. Well, good. You. We'll see you soon. Okay, that's the promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're on. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Hi, yes, Hi, you all, everybody. Are you well? Are you guys behaving? No. Uh, are you going to Kohl's much? No. no. Online. I've been shopping online quite a bit. I have, I've been shopping online, but not at Kohl's. Got to know the UPS and, and the FedEx people quite well from a distance. Wow. Yeah, me too. Oh, good for you. I got yep. orders still coming yet. So I'm doing well for that. Packing well, boxes. Yep. Oh, well, good for you. All right. We'll see you. Bye. Ya. Bye. Bye. Good morning. Came across a story I remember sharing with you folks many years ago. It's worth repeating again. Karl Barth was a, a theologian, well respected, and considered uh, in his time one of the with great insight. And he was asked this question: What is the most profound scriptural truth you have found? knowing who he was and all the books he's written and all the insight he had, they were trying to ask this very deep theological question. And he responded by saying, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That wraps it up. The wonderful chorus we sang as kids and as adults, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. What a precious promise of love. So today, as we finish up this passage in the second part in John chapter 15 about remaining in Christ or abiding in him, the Lord Jesus talks about his love for us. As And, and the disciples, remember, are, are hours away from running and Christ is hours away from the cross. He says this, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. As the Father love me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be fulfilled. Do you get the connection? So the love God gives to us, and as we continue to remain connected, abiding, remaining in him, joy swells from within. What an incredible promise. So to review, last week we spent some time in three points. Number one, we were remain connected. So in this passage in John chapter 15, 11 times he says, remain, 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 remain. That means abiding, continue to stay connected. So we're to stay connected to Christ. We are to remain pruning. He, he said, everybody who follows me will be pruned. Um, any tree, any flower, pruning. You can't, new life cannot come from old. What was done last year won't produce new fruit this year. And everybody will be pruned to be more fruitful. As well as we were to remain fruitful. That was the goal of our salvation. And only through Christ we're connected to the vine. He's the vine. We're the branches. The source comes through the roots to us. If we're not connected to him and remaining in him, we can do nothing. And so today, the fourth point 
is that we are to remain in his love. That's a wonderful concept. Even to again address the concept of Almighty God loving each one of us, knowing us by name, every hair on our head, all of our idiosyncrasies and frailties. He loves us to the point of giving his life, a demonstration of the ultimate love. And we are to remain in his love. There's nothing more he can do to love us. It rests on us to stay connected and remain in him. You know, through the years, I uh, enjoy giving uh, counsel to couples getting married and, and doing weddings. And, and the, as I talk with them, the number one thing we talk about is this love, not a feeling, but it is a commitment of loyalty that they're in love and they're wonderful things, but what happens down the road when the challenges come? You know, you hear years later, well, we just fell out of love, or we're no longer in love. What happened? They were distancing themselves, issues of life happened. I mean, we know that life can be really challenging. We're in this quarantine. Uh, there's some ugly stuff going on, unfortunately, when people are cooped up together and the, the old nature kicks in, they get selfish and they get ornery with each other. And even life and its traumas and in marriage and family, when stuff happens and it's unpleasant, marriages dissolve, become, they become disconnected, they become selfish and, and pull away from God as well as each other. So here's the the promise, the exhortation, the blessing, that if we choose to remain in Christ, abide in him, not only will we experience this love and be able to produce fruit, but we will find joy. Think about that. Joy. What an incredible thing. It's not happiness. Happiness usually happens with things around us, but joy within it's an especially important part, and it'll make your joy, the word is full, it also means complete or fulfilled. If you remember the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, that joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit within, swelling within. With that thought of joy, I was thinking through and looking through my files, and we have referenced Johnny Eric Cantata a few times. Uh, the joy that she brings to so many in her difficulty. Here is, here's a story from her as she was speaking at a conference. And during a break, a Christian woman's conference, Johnny Erickson Tata was asked about her joy. In an article, Joy Hard Won, Johnny asked the woman who wanted to know how she could be so happy in her wheelchair. This was her quote. I didn't do it, I said. In fact, may I tell you honestly how I woke up this morning? This is an average day, I breathed deeply. After my husband, Ken, leaves for work at 6 a.m., I'm alone until I hear the front door open at 7 a.m. That's when a friend arrives to get me up. While I listen to her make coffee, I pray, oh Lord, my friend will soon give me a bath get me dressed, sit me up in my chair, brush my hair and teeth, and send me out the door. I don't have the strength to face this routine one more time. I have no resources. I don't have a smile to take into the day, but you do. May I have yours, God. I need you desperately. So what happens when your friend comes through the bedroom door, one of them asked. I turn my head towards her and give her a smile sent straight from heaven. It's not mine, it's God's. And so I said, gesturing, gesturing to my paralyzed legs, whatever joy you see today was hard won this morning. Well, there's no doubt we have our moments and the situations of life can be overcoming and, and hard to find joy. And yet, as Johnny's testimony to us reveals, as we remain connected to God, we can reach up and ask for his help and strength and joy. A classic 
a writer, Oswald Chambers, years ago said, the Bible speaks plainly about joy, but it how, moreover talks about a happy Christian. Happiness uh, depends on what happens, joy does not. Remember, Christ Jesus had joy and he prays that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. It's the issue of the heart. So if we remain connected with Christ, God the Father and Spirit, joy happens with this love connection, even in the circumstances of life. I think that's why uh, in Proverbs it said, above all else, guard the heart. Because when this becomes cold and calloused and hard, it's hard to experience love, let alone love others. And that's the second part of this uh, remaining love, is that we're to abide in love, but we're also, we are commanded to love. So, we've been quarantined for, seems like, hundreds of years. Anybody getting cranky and ornery with anybody? And we should have a hotline and people call in and pray with us. But it happens and we, and it, we get just kind of unsettling. It's really hard to demonstrate authentic, genuine selfless love and yet in this Christ commands the disciples four times and he uses the word command it's not a suggestion it's not um, a recommendation it is a command you will if you remind if you remain in me you will love others and remember in Matthew he says the two greatest commands love God with all your heart soul mind and your neighbor as yourself it makes sense we receive love and grace and forgiveness, changes what's going on in here and here, and we disseminate that and practice it in our lives. To love one another, it's not a suggestion, it's, it's a command. And by this they will know that you are my disciples. So we are, remained, we are to remain connected, abiding in his love, transforming us through that experience with joy, Let's make sure nothing gets hard in here. And if you have to get things out of your heart and mind so that you can experience the joy and love of Christ, make sure things don't taint and harden your heart. Uh, the fifth point is to remain prayerful. So as I was reading this passage in the I Am's, the book of John, we're trying to, who is Jesus? He talks about prayer. And what a wonderful thing that he says here. Um, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you these things I command, that you love one another. So that was nice. I saw that once, and I said, oh, nice. But then as I remember, this whole passage takes place Thursday night in Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, hours before the cross. And so the washing of feet, and we talked about I am the way, the truth, the life, that has happened within this three or four hours of the Passover, before Gethsemane, before the betrayal, before the death of Christ. Four times in this time period, and I've got the, the passages there in the slide, four times he encourages us to pray and says, if we ask three of those times in my name, and of course that relates to by faith and into the will of God, the Father hears and will provide. Now remember, the disciples were going to experience tremendous turmoil hours and days after. Their whole world was going to fall apart. And yet here's, here's Jesus saying, I'm going to send a comforter to you. He's going to lead you in all truth. Uh, remain in my love, because apart from me you can't do anything. And don't forget to pray, because when you pray, the Father hears. I found this unique story which was in a newspaper many years ago. So here's the headlines of the paper. It said, unanswered prayers, letters to God found dumped in an ocean. And the article goes, the letters, 300 in all, sent to a New Jersey minister had been tossed into the ocean, most of them unopened. The minister had died long before the letters were found. How they came to be floating in the surf off the New Jersey shore is only a mystery. The letters were addressed to a minister 
because he had promised to pray. Some of the letters asked for frivolous things. Others were written with anguish about spouses and children and widows. They poured out their hearts to God, asking for help with relatives who were abusing drugs and alcohol and spouses who were cheating. One asked God for a husband and a father to her children. The reporter concluded that all were, quote, unanswered prayers, unquote. Not so, the article says. If those written writers of that letter cried out to God, he heard each one of them. Not one honest prayer has lost his ears. All my longings lie open before you, Lord, David says, in the midst of deep crisis. He also says in Psalm 38, my sign is not hidden from you. David understood that we can cast all our cares on the Lord, even if no one else prays for us. He confidently concluded, Psalm 86, 7, when I am distressed, I call to you because you answer me. It can be discouraging when we say prayers and ask for God to act. Let's not forget that he always hears. Sometimes you have to wait. Yes, sometimes it's no, but he always hears and works in perfection to his will and plan and purpose for our lives. And so I thought it was rather unique here that at the, just before he's gonna to go to Gethsemane and pray, Father, not take this cup from me, but not my will, but thine be done. That should be our prayer. But that the significance and the power of the prayer and in those passages that you saw three times in my name. That is a name that, it, as it's going to say later on in Philippians chapter 2, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Wow. The resurrected Lord, through his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, broke sin's curse, broke the world going in a place of destruction, now offering hope and grace to those who respond, loving us, no greater love than anyone to lay his life down for a friend. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if we pray to him and as his children, he maintains and allows us to become fruitful, allows us to experience love and joy, and we remain connected through our prayers and faith as his to our Heavenly Father. That's an incredible gift as well as uh, a weapon, a tool, so that we can be fruitful. Again, in context, the disciples were hours away from their world crashing. And they would spend days in frustration and many weeks until the Holy Spirit was poured out. And then the fledgling church would be beginning to evolve. And yet God was in it. And he works, especially in unique situations which we're in. So I'd like to just affirm, encourage you, uh, earlier this week, I listened in Sirius Radio, a brand new song that came out by Natalie Grant. It's called My Weapon or My Greatest Weapon. And I heard it on the radio and I came in uh, a few days later and pulled it up on YouTube and listened to this new song. And I got to tell you, I was sitting in the office and I just broke down. It was just overwhelming. It's a beautiful song, lovely orchestra. It's in black and white. You want to watch the video. But tremendous lyrics. May I just read some of them for you and encourage you strongly to go to YouTube, look up My Weapon and Natalie Grant, who sings it. And this is what she sings. Let every lie be silenced and all depression cease. Let every dark assignment bow down at Jesus' feet. Let every curse be broken, let every storm be tamed, and all that comes against me be bound in Jesus' name. Your presence is my greatest weapon, pushing back the darkness, breaking every chain. 
My worship opens up the heavens, crushing every stronghold when I speak your name, because your presence is my weapon. And it goes on to talk about strength and not being shaken, and death has been defeated. It's a wonderful, wonderful song. I think you'll enjoy it. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to every day pull that song up, play it, listen, and be encouraged. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you in all circumstances. Your presence with us is sufficient. And grace that you've provided is sufficient to sustain and allow us to thrive in you, to experience joy and love. May we stay connected. May we remain connected. May we shed off those things that are hindering the love relationship with you and others. And may we be bolstered in prayer and spending more time, especially now, in prayer to the Father, asking to be used and to be fruitful vessels for the kingdom. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Blessings.